Camden. That's a new name. You just blew away seasoned maniacs with fast switch fibers. I like the such as Chuck E. Cheese Ranch, Lewis, Fell Please 2.0, MX, John Gall, Yes and No, Finney's Bass and Bodybuilding, Dub 87, Joe T, James Van Heel, Bretto, Jake Seller, Small Fry, the famous, infamous Truth One, of course, the legendary Kaizen Productions, Gin Rummy, Joe D, Little Bunny, formerly Pitiful, and the Alpha barbecue sauce. Thick Cut Ohio. Well, most of you Midwestern Westerners are a little slow. Probably ammonia. Quick Pump is here on a Friday night. Francisco Fernando Hernandez. You're a freak yourself. Yes. Hopefully nobody's downtown at the Avenue making plans to go to a club, a, a comedy club, a honky tonk, or a festival, or just a, in general, a house party, or a gathering of a rough crowd to do a Brad break. Cheese gave blood today. Wow, how do you feel, Cheese? I never gave blood in my life. The massive, hello, Bruce Jocelyn. The massive Fell Place 2.0 is eating a pound of flank steak, casserole, and dumplings post workout. Watching Lenny is live. Life is good. Well, thank you for joining us, Fell Place. And that sounds like an incredible meal. Has everything you need in it. James Van Heel. I'm honored that you choose the Big Lenny Live over many other a vast repertoire of possible programming on Netflix, internet, you name it. Tyler Sierra says he saw me peeing in the bushes today at the bus stop. That's very possible, Tyler. <laughs> Although you shouldn't be able to see me, so I must not be doing a good job being very discreet. I thought the trees would cover me. But I did hear a horn honk, so that must be you. Thanks for looking out for me. Yes, my father remarried, and as far as I know, he has a daughter, and he has a granddaughter, and his daughter's in her 20s now, maybe possibly close to 30, and his son-in-law is in the Naval, is a Naval officer. Mark, Mike Markovic, our fellow Croat, yes. Truth one says he did heavy shoulders and arms today. No, I'm done for the evening. Just had ground beef, eggs, and rice. Going out is underrated. Truth one, isn't that 100% true? Knowing that you did the heavy, you laid the groundwork. You tore down the fibers. And you had one of the finest meals a human being could have. And you're going to recuperate, plus you're on the Big Lenny Live where you can interact with other maniacs. And, and no subject is off the table here. Kaizen Productions has a Broccoli Head Chronicles update. The Broccoli Head stood around the cable crossover area talking about their girlfriends. Uh, what this world is coming to. Yes, I'll film a gym session very soon, as long as I'm able to. No, if you see foam in the urine, don't worry about it. You might be dehydrated, so increase your fluid, but not during, before, or after the, the meal. Hello, price to pay. Francisco Hernandez, I went to the meat department and they had nothing to my liking, so this weekend I gotta get meat real fast. Chuck E. Cheese Ranch feels good. He always eats before his workout. He's going to walk the treadmill tonight. They say no serious lifting for 12 hours. <laughs> oh, 
Hopefully you can store that blood in reserve, Chuck E. Cheese Ranch. That sounds like superhuman blood to me. Small farm made a piss square today in honor of you. Everyone needs a piss square where they can go discreetly and quickly. Yes, Robzilla will be again in the future. And a great thing is, you don't know when he's going to arrive like a thief in the night. He'll ride, come in like a lightning bolt. You never know when Rob Zilla is going to make another appearance. <laughs> Kaizen Productions, that's absolutely the sums up tonight's topic. If you're not competing against someone or something, you're stagnate, stagnating. Stagnation equals death. When am I moving out of my mom's apartment? I really haven't thought about that right now. And quite honestly, she needs me around here. It's getting real tough for her, but that's the way things go. Good Chuck E. Cheese Ranch. I'm here, glad to hear some positives about giving blood. James Van Heel surmises that Dale Chance probably a deer meat and pheasant. When do we get another Delray Misfits video? I would say before the year's out. I don't know what that is, Figaro. That sounds very unusual. You ought to look up on the internet first. So Dan, Dale Chance was on all fours walking on a treadmill. Did he, Dale ever hear stick to the basics? He's always running after some secret routine, some secret PED, trainers, nutritionists. When is it going to end? Yes, Figaro, a 20-inch neck is very big. However, it would also give you a some sort of sleep apnea. <laughs> very good chance of that. If I'm 18 forever, then what's Brad? I think Brad's, <laughs> I don't, don't want to say right now. Where is the Big Lenny OnlyFans page going live? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to set that up. I did do neck today. I did the rear neck with the iron mine head strap for Hercules. And I did front neck, laying on the flat bench, putting a towel on my forehead and using plates. Vel plays and has a statement of someone that will remain nameless. Wow, fireworks, isn't it great? Isn't it great? Don't forget the oohs and the ahs. Jack Mihav says Brad is getting some new ink this weekend. Now, can anybody imagine? Here's a guy putting all those hours in with his employer. Comes home, has numerous responsibilities. He's almost like he's on a ranch, minus taking care of livestock. And he's going to actually schedule, which he has to do in advance, a an ink session. And I believe he has certain select ones in Fort Lauderdale that he uses in Hollywood, Florida. And he's going to actually drive down there, take hours to get inked up, come back painful, uncomfortable, somewhat immobile, and then have to be careful until that ink sets in his body the correct way. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. James Stack saw a tan, 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 six foot three. He didn't approach because he was shy. Always approach. If you see a girl that's outstanding or something intriguing, always go up and say hi. A wink and a smile and say hi. I saw a tan in the gym today. She had the white dyed hair, short hair, thick body, a real sexy gym attire on. I couldn't even describe it. And I went up to her and she was 
dripping sweat. And I said, you're the prettiest girl in the gym. And she says, oh, thank you. And she, she just felt so down to earth. And it was, it's always worth it. At least say hi, because you never know, you know. Thank you, Tom Phillip. Those are some good wrestling t-shirts. My thoughts on Ron DeSantis is he's doing a good job as governor. Uh, however, he was elected governor. Uh, do another term as governor before you announce political aspirations. Although, hey, you're free to do what you want, but I don't think you'd be the best candidate for the Republican Party, Ron. You don't have the experience and the international connections that Donald J. Trump does. And quite frankly, I do want to see it, actually, because I believe I'm going to see the debate if you have what it takes to debate correctly. It's not like you're debating that Gillum or that Charlie Crist. Good evening, Bradford Mail Pick Prick. Does my mom have a partner? No. How do you get a wider frame? Basic movements, increasing your calories, protein, sleeping good. And especially doing that when you're in your teenage years. I recommend 13 is the age for men and women, or young men and women in that case, to start training. How many times a week should I lift heavy, natural? Hit every body part heavy once a week. Do about two exercises, basic exercises, do a warm up set, and then do about two or three work sets total, six to 12 reps. Once you start getting 12 reps, put two and a half pounds, five pounds in the bar. <coughs> it's pretty simple. <coughs> Excuse me. Taco King hurt his back deadlifting. He's been doing reverse hyperextensions and using an inversion table. Do I have any other recommendations? Yes. Do some light deadlifts. Do them off the rack. Uh, I used to hurt my back more often than I should have doing deadlifts off the floor. No, I never tried dipping tobacco. And... I doubt I would let a girl spit her tobacco in my mouth. Although that, that sounds kind of intriguing now as you say it. Chuck E. Cheese got some petite sirloin steaks on sale. three ninety nine dollars a pound. Cook them rare. Goodbye, Chuck E. Cheese. And not only that, that's a great recipe for cooking. When should you incorporate cold therapy? Not certain on that. Look on the internet, find out the latest recommendations. Big Daddy was training at legs the other day and a group of four punk kids were on the next machine behind me, carrying on and laughing. Big Daddy told him this wasn't a comedy club. Take that cookie cutter behavior outside. That's great. I think that's great, Big Daddy. They're disrespecting the gym. The gym's a holy place. And, you know, I get that, too. When you're trying to focus and you hear people laughing and giggling or talking about movies, it is. It's, it's disrespectful and disgraceful. Probably had broccoli head haircuts. You should look at their physiques. That's nothing to giggle about, particularly if they get locked up. They would, I bet you they'd wish they'd be training hard, Big Daddy. Magnus says the old school trainers believe that Steve Reeves shrugs, wide grip pull-ups behind the neck presses could widen the clavicles. I do believe it can to some degree, especially if you're a teenager. Rant about Jay-Z, never heard of her. <laughs> and I can just say this, what, what does he do for society? Did he cure disease? Does he inspire anybody? 
did he did he perform a miracle on anybody? What did he do? Did he ever give anybody a good life's lesson? No, it seems to me he's a product of that instant gratification crowd and running his mouth with no substance to it, but nonsense and stupidity. And that's a big problem. Uh, young men trying to be like that or looking up to that. When I just say, what, is, what good does he do? Does absolutely no good whatsoever. Even athletes are total, many, many times more valuable to society than some punk like that that runs his mouth. Quick pump. I had uh, went to bed at eight o'clock and I got up about five o'clock. So I would get about eight or nine hours sleep, sometimes nine. And that was that was every night. Unless, of course, Steelers were on Monday Night Football or some select movies were on, which I could watch, like The Omen, The Exorcist, Jaws, The Wizard of Oz, uh, maybe a Pittsburgh Pirate game, but that, that was very, very rare. And I'm, I thank my father for that. I'll let this, I never minded. I, I went, I was sleepy at that time. I didn't mind going to sleep at all. I didn't, nothing else I had to do. I didn't have an over toys or distraction video games. So what else could I have done really? Price to pay. I'm glad that you're a kid. You're so important in the future of the maniacs to get these values down pat and you will succeed beyond any of these cookie cutter broccoli heads. My thoughts on kids growing up on cheap microwavable ready meals. It is terrible. Parents feed their kids for convenience and affordability. Yeah, but it's actually not, it's not worth it. Any type of prepackaged processed food is not worth it. And the amount of nutrition you're getting in one of some of those meals is appalling, particularly the protein content. Uh, it's a bad parenting. There's no excuse for it. And that's a whole nother issue. And I feel bad for those children that are on that type of meal plan or even worse. There's some children out there that don't even have parents giving them anything or children with single moms. They'll have a bag of chips if that or a bowl of cereal with no milk. I've heard stories and it breaks my heart actually, because you're not, they're not giving that kid child a chance in life. Lewis, I don't know. I, I, they do look in the mirror quite a bit. <laughs> and they like lifting their shirt up on the sides. So show their intercostals and their serratus development, outer abs. Bradford Melbrick says, Jay-Z inspires colored broccoli heads and colors of all kinds of colors. And I'd like to know what, and you know, break it down. I'm still waiting for something positive out of them. Price to pay says, for kids, drink a lot of milk and do a lot of stretching, increase your height. I agree with that 100%. And do the pullovers, do the Steve Reeves shrugs. Expand your rib cage and your frame. Yes, Figaro handstand push ups are a very intense alternative to overhead presses. Matter of fact, the legendary Mike Deegan, who almost won the Nationals it's about 15 years ago. It was an inspiration for Meow Man to start training. I remember seeing him about five years ago when 
Meow Man came down to the uh, Busy Body Fitness Center. And as this warm up, he got on the ground, put his feet against the wall, and he started pumping out rep after rep of headstand push ups. And his shoulders looked gigantic. Of course, all the blood came down to his shoulders at that point. Do I believe Liger, Liver King has abdominal etching? Yes, there's something. Something about it that looks a little off, and I guess that's, that's a, a cosmetic procedure. It wouldn't surprise me. Figaro weighs 270. That's great. How tall are you? Chuck E. Cheese Ranch says the same types, the broccoli heads, come up and ask him, how does, does he get so jacked or for gym advice? Tell them by not running your mouth and chit-chatting, spending all your time on the phone since training advice won't help them. Yes, Magnus, we're all 18-year-olds, but the average 18-year-old is far beyond below where they should be standard of every standard. And with all this information, I would have killed to have been 18 and have this type of information in my fingertips. On my, on my phone, it was unthinkable. I was reading muscle magazines and bodybuilding books, and they gave you that same line of BS. Yes, OG Ghost, when I was very young in preschool and grade school, all the upperclassmen, which you could say fourth or sixth graders, used to call me Leonard Skinner. I didn't even know who the hell that was. <coughs> I certainly wasn't going to ask my father. Figaro asked, are Timberland boots for cookie cutters? Depends what you're wearing them for. Adam Harper said he grew up without food. His parents were dirt poor. Well, he turned out pretty good. And that's child abuse right there. Not having correct food, correct uh, sleeping environment. Also, the ability to play sports, play outside, uh, and a little library of intelligent books for children to read, including all the holy books of the major religions. Truth One is in bed early 8 p.m. during the week so he can train at 5 a.m. before work so he doesn't have to subjugate himself to broccoli head cookie cutters in the evenings. Truth one, you have the idealizations of a professional. I like everything that you say. It's on point. Great addition to this live, truth one. I did that too at times. Actually, I used to go in and do morning cardio at times before work when I was doing contests. And I told the story of this gentleman would be in the gym 5 a.m. Wouldn't wouldn't train or hardly train at all. He would get in there and start coming up to everyone and say good morning and this and that. And, you know, I, I was on an empty stomach cardio with all my stuff going to work. And, you know, it was, it was hot and humid in the morning. And he used to come up and say, hey, how you doing? Well, I'm on the Stairmaster just in agony, you know, because I trained the day before. I'm on limited calories. I did cardio the night before. And I just want to do some cardio and bike it to work before I can have a bit of eggs and milk meal. Hey, how you doing today? Great day to be alive. And I just said, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck away from me. And a couple of the guys at the gym just started laughing. One of the fire chiefs, actually, who saw me all the time on my bike and at the hospital, was get up. He said that was the funniest thing you ever saw. I said, "What the fuck is he doing coming in here?" And he looked like he kind of looked like Jerry Lawler, but a fat like Jerry Lawler. And that's saying something because Jerry Lawler never had a great physique. 
but man, oh, oh, don't do that to people. Fell Place 2.0 says Brad is deep frying his chicken and VO2 oil. OG Ghost, I think the forearm devices are good, but you're working on a lot of hands and fingers and not so much of the forearms itself. You're working uh, some of the flexors on either side of the forearm, but you're not getting the entire forearm out of that. Uh, make sure they're progressive, of course, and you can go to a higher level, but got to add some... And for me, what a good great forearm builder is not using straps, but at the same time, uh, using things, especially chin-ups, pull-downs, and barbell rows. Mercedes Santos says, the most beautiful love story is Christina and Big Lenny. Spiritual and pureness. Real men take notes and leave the dope. Like someone I who needs to remain nameless, whose house is Halloween every day. Life is too short. And just too exciting to be stoned. Mike O'Hearn is in such good shape, Brian Sirius. Simple. Very consistent with his training, consistent with his diet. He doesn't seem to have problems with injuries. And he has his hormones optimized. Very simple. Michael Jacoby, my cycles are simple. 400 milligrams of testosterone. Price to pay, I don't struggle with porn addiction. It's not something I need to look at. It's something I look at occasionally, but I don't think it's an overbearing part of my lifestyle anymore. Uh, but I can understand where you're coming from. And if you continue searching out extreme types, you're on a slippery slope. But the good thing is, price to pay, you recognize it in yourself. The famous Cyril Figgis, welcome to the live. I have been talking to Dale Chance in quite a, quite a while. I'd like to see what, what's going on. Seems to me his fire for training isn't like it used to be. But I could be wrong. Yes, cheese. They had those cookie cutter workout plans and page after page of how great cell tech was. It was unbelievable. It suckered in the best of us. Just a little TRT made 300 bucks training clients at LA fitness. That's fantastic. A well earned living where you're helping human beings reach their full potential. Thank you for being on the Big Lenny Live, just a little TRT. And thank you for being a misfit maniac, a high-ranking member of the Maniac Army. OG Ghost gives the thumbs up to Timberland Boots for comfort and work. Price to pay grew up poor and they struggled to eat at times. Well, that's what we always go over. The most economical types of foods, your ground beef, your rice, your roasts, your eggs. Throw in a few fruits and vegetables from a farmer's market, as cheap as you can get them. And keep the processed and the restaurant food, the fast food, and the uh, artificial food, and the high sugar food the hell out of our bodies and our budgets. James Stack, yeah, another how you doing from a Jerry Lawler wannabe. Does how you doing ever make any feel, feel better? Does it add to somebody's quality of life? 
I don't know, James. I'd be embarrassed to say that to somebody, although I've had this. I had said it to people. You know, I've caught the cookie cutter. <laughs> Good evening, nuns. Welcome to the Big Lenny Live. And the famous Dimitri Navrides. Yes, I would let my I would encourage my son to read the Quran. Uh, he may not be able to understand it, but I have, might have someone from an Islamic scholar teach him about it, as well as the Bible, maybe the Bhagavad Gita for those Hindus and of course, the Holy Bible and the Torah. Price to pay as a statement that sums up what the gym is all about. When you come to the gym, it, it is like going to war. You're risking yourself. You have to be at the top of your game. You have to be as efficient as you can be. You have to get along with others and navigate your workout when cookie cutters might be monopolizing the equipment. And you got to get it done. You got to get it done quickly and you got to get it done to where you're tearing down the most muscle fibers. The gym isn't a bar. It's not a barber shop. It's not a grocery store. It's, it's a holy place. The Church of Iron. Yes, Raul Rodriguez, I'd love to know where that haircut come from. The broccoli headed goofs. Dylan Galan says, how many co-workers have you slept with at the hospital? Well, let's not say slept with. Let's say how many did I have a form of sexual relations with? And I'm not talking about intercourse, although I did have intercourse with probably less than five but that was in the 90s. And you know my stance on intercourse now. If women have intercourse with a woman, it's to have a child. And I intend to have a child. And I'm not going to do that with her unless I want to have a child with her. So, however, hand jobs and oral sex, whatever. Depends what, you know, how I feel that day. But I would include any type of sexual contact. I would say probably, and I'm talking kitchen staff, housekeeping staff, nursing staff, rehab staff, uh, you name it, probably 40, 40 women. He is right, Chuck E. Cheese. Every day above the ground is a blessing. It's just a fact that I didn't see him in there training at all or doing a Stairmaster. He actually used to come in with a styrofoam cup of coffee and sit at the front, lean on the front desk and talk to some of the girls while sipping his coffee. And I'm sure they had things to do. And as everyone would come in, top of the morning to you, good morning. Ridiculous, why do you, why are you coming in here? To be a greeter or what? Toledo Todd says, how do we avoid getting sore elbows from doing triceps? Do a lot of warm-up sets, get the blood in there. Dale Chance had a good warm-up set, warm-up technique for his elbows. Involved a lot of push-downs, very light, with reverse grips and things like that. And he'd do about five or ten minutes of it before he started his direct tricep work. So you might want to direct message Dale Chance. Yes, Raul Rodriguez. Overhead bicep curls are good. I did them pre-contest one time. It seems to peak up your biceps. And of course, Freaky Marcus Rule loved them. Eris Cosmos has the right attitude. He just got home from work. Well, you got home from your... Uh, place that you earn money and provide a service, now you go to war. And when you approach it like that, war also means control and efficiency.
<laughs> well, D8870 spreads his seed all over. Yes, Vel plays 2.0. See, mere attention gives you confidence. OG Ghost. I woke up, got outside, sipped some lemon juice with pink Himalayan salt and apple cider vinegar. I did a cameo, Big Lenny cameo on cameo.com. Remember, we got Thanksgiving coming up, so send a cameo to a friend, relative, whomever for cameo.com, Big Lenny. Uh, went in, ate leftover pasta with sauce, five whole eggs with cheese, a banana, quart of lactose-free milk. Of course, my vitamin and minerals. Then I did some research on nutritional strategies. A few, did a little research on carnivore diets. And then I went off to the bus stop, waiting on the bus. Went to the gym, did abs, shoulders, neck. Went out, went to the bus stop, waited on the bus, did some more research, went to Publix, didn't buy any meat. I just bought some carbs, and some lactose-free milk. Ro Rodriguez, definitely a great idea. Some coconut oil. Price to pay. It's okay to live within the past a little bit. It makes you cognizant of the future and you don't want to waste your future. <clears throat> Loud in the city says, Brad's done with you. Andrew's done with you. Jay's done with you. And Rob Zill is done with you. How do you know loud in the city? <laughs> I can say one thing. Their creator, God in heaven, is not done with any of us. Price to pay? I'm going to look it up at uh, Mr. Oppenheimer's speech when he invented the atomic bomb. Dan St. Fernando, I think Sassy needs to be off meds. You get on a good diet, high protein, central fats, and training, get out of that atmosphere. Yes, OG Ghost, that is the most ignorant greeting you could do is say, hi, how you doing, good morning. And even family members doing it, it's not necessary. There's no thought behind it. It's so cookie cutter. It's so hypocritical. You know, you've seen in your life school teachers or people that actually didn't wish you well and tried to sabotage you in, in one way or another. Co-workers, managers, whatever. But they'll use the good mornings and the good afternoons and then they'll stab the knife ready to stab you in the back, so. Magnus recommends band pushdowns to help the connective tissue in the elbows hypertrophy. Louis Simmons has his lifters do them 50 to 10 quick reps two times a week. Yes, I had numb hands from using GH. Yes, I've also had feelings of incredible strength in my forearms and hands too. Like I, sometimes I felt like I could 
be like the Incredible Hulk and just pinch walls and break them open. Yes, price to pay. Organic apple cider vinegar alkalinizes your body. Yes, OG Ghost. Everyone should review their lifestyle. Lewis, when are we going to the bamboo room? I th I was said that yesterday in, in jest. And sure, no way in hell I would be going there. No way. The heck I want to go out at night for it. Well, Rodriguez listens to the big Lenny live and trades abs, crunches, upper leg lifts for lower and side planks for obliques and regular planks. That's a great use of your time. Efficiency is the most important thing for success in your physical endeavors as well as every aspect of a successful life, which is ultimately affecting your fellow man in every way possible with inspiration, intelligence, information, and encouragement. Yes, Chuck E. Cheese Ranch. What's up or what's up, homie? That you can guarantee doesn't deserve a response from any anybody with some intelligence. Any hot 19 and 25-year-old nurses on that list? Yes. 19, 25-year-old kitchen workers and housekeeping workers. Quick bump, I can guarantee you this. If I ever went to the bamboo room, I would definitely go on live. Probably not Michael Paul. Psycho We Social says, Jesus said forgive. But what if they keep hurting you? Do you stay forgiving? Well, if they're coming at you physically, you defend yourself. And you make it to a point where they're not able to hurt anybody. Number two, if they're hurting you through name calling or things like that, that's meaningless. That can't do anything. Remember, names can't hurt anybody unless you let them. So... The greatest thing is to be able to take insults, people that disagree with you, people that make fun of you, and just see it for what it is, absolute nonsense. But of course, if someone touches you, you remove the liability, and you defend yourself. That's the rule. No, pull-ups are probably one of the greatest things you can do for your back. Question is, how many people are able to do them in good form, especially 300-plus pound freaks? Joe Rogan likes to use shock value with his little animal stories. So, getting back to tonight's live, competition is the finest part of life. And there's many forms of competition. Competition against others. Competition against yourself. <clears throat> and competition is what makes a great capitalistic society. Because in socialist countries, when there's no competition, as far as companies go, that standard of 
and work ethic, that standard of improvement goes. And if everyone's getting the same pay rate, and I'll say it, money is a great motivator. Always has been, always will be. Uh, that's why those communist countries have problems. There's no private enterprise where if you don't provide goods and services to the public, you're going to be out of business. And when you see men, boys, whatever, it starts with boys, even girls, they compete in school, say for girls, who's the prettiest or boys, who's the fastest, who's the strongest, they'll do things in the playground, or at least they used to, uh, or in the neighborhood, at least if they're still allowed. Uh, and that's how you make an adult. People have to realize, and I'm, as you see this nowadays with no outcomes in education, no outcomes in, in sports events, participation trophies and things like that. That just destroys the soul of a young person and they'll never be able to excel as an adult and competitiveness is what is what makes you excel and pushing yourself and using discipline, self-discipline to know that and society should always be set up so for those that put in the work conduct themselves in a disciplined way. They deserve the best, finest rewards of society. And sadly, what do you get these days? People be playing video games or listening to certain kinds of music. Doesn't take any discipline. Doesn't take any type of special diet. You don't need to be on your best game as far as sleep and nutrition. It leads to eating junk food. It leads to looking for temporary feelings of pleasure through drugs, alcohol, junk food, pornography. That's another one. Kills competitiveness. Whatever happened to going out and talking to a girl the old-fashioned way? Huh? And there's a certain someone that only has a relationship unless he he's anonymously on a computer and some type of computer anonymous dating game that's ridiculous absolutely absurd and any parent that keeps their kids away from competition you're going to ask for trouble you're asking for a kid that's not going to be able to go through life and every little thing that goes wrong they'll either throw a temper tantrum commit a crime, and in worst cases, pick up a gun and go to a school. Yes, Raul Rodriguez. Forms of pornography are, have been around for years. So competition is what makes you look forward to the next day. And our jobs as maniacs is to quell the forces that choose to remove competition or enable life to be carried out to the person that's so-called discriminated against or a minority, or is victimized that gets the rewards. And people talk about how long will the United States last, unless there's not a dramatic turnaround, and people not being so sensitive and willing to give up and to go through things and learn how to go through them and do the things others say you can't do, as well as being competitive, not only with others, but yourself. To say to yourself, 
what is the best thing I could be doing right now to make myself a better human? Is it going to sleep? Is it eating a meal? Is it go train? Is it go, you know, work on a punching a bag? Is it getting online or going to a library and studying a subject? Or is it going out and interacting with people, talking to people, every, every person? Try to connect with a human being. Try to talk to a woman and vice versa. That's what life's all about. Quick Pump says, why doesn't a certain leather daddy approach his women like he approaches his leather boys? <laughs> well, I don't know about the leather boys, but there's plenty of women, and it's the same thing with girls. They're always waiting for Mr. Right. You'll come in contact with many eligible women. They don't have to necessarily be young, too. Just go up and talk to somebody. Don't stare at a girl and don't say anything. That's the worst thing you could do. That shows a lack of self-confidence. <laughs> Loud in the city. I, if I were to guess... I would say you would go between 160 and 180 pounds. You've been called a behind your back and to your face, a nerd, a dork. Uh, you've had issues in school with adjusting or fitting in, and you probably were on some type of medication. And you've tried many things, sports, but you never could quite find the perfect thing for you. So. <laughs> All wrong, Loudness City. All of it's wrong. Or some of it. Oh, Loudness City, you're getting. Uh, that's upsetting you, huh? Well, don't be, because no matter where you are in life, Loudness City, sit down, assess your goals, and look back at where you've been in life, and say to yourself, where do you want to go? Not where somebody else wants you to go, whether a parent, a girl, maybe a girl that you like, or maybe even a girlfriend. So... Loudness City, your statements show an easy psychological read. You write out, you failed at everything. Everything? I'm certain you never failed at everything. Some things we fail in, some things we don't. Some things we can be better in. Actually, most things we could be better in. Loud in the City, what is a skelter, Raul Rodriguez? Now Loudness City is throwing a temper tantrum. I'm just glad I'm not you. Well, we're all ourselves, Loudness City. You should be. You should be take pride in yourself instead of looking at others. And the statements you're making are very unintelligent and very childish. And... I'm sorry that I'm offending you so much, but believe me, if you DM me, we can have a private conversation. We can go over a few things. Big Daddy is carving up eating cupcakes. Big Daddy can get away with that because he has a lot of muscle mass. <clears throat> Matt L says, what have I achieved in my life? If you're talking about awards, trophies, honors, that's not the important thing. Although I was 
in the Pittsburgh Press Spelling Bee as a finalist out of parochial and public schools in the Pittsburgh area. Also was in the Kiwanis Spelling Bee of parochial schools in the Pittsburgh area. And, I, and all the schools, I mean, you're looking at two dozen, three dozen schools. I was in probably the top 10 in my age group and spelling, and that's a lot of students, but that's not really important. What's important is I'm able to interact with others through various means, and we could talk about things that are very important and get off this cookie cutter merry-go-round of trying to fit in or the false sense of what's successful and what our reason we're put on this earth is to do. And I've never been happier in my life, and I own almost nothing. I, one step away from sleeping on the beach, but you know what? I've never been happier, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. Although those aren't the goals by any means. Uh, it's just a journey, the ups, the downs, interacting with others. Every contingency of life is exciting. And I hope that all the maniacs on this live, every single one of you, get to be at the point where they realize that for themselves and the things you put dedication into and effort and how you inspire another human being is what, at the end of the day, shines on this world in eternity, so. Johnny B says he bets loud in the city is 354 pounds of flab. Johnny B, I disagree because a 400 pounder wouldn't talk in such a way, like almost like a, a spoiled temper tantrum throwing child but the good thing is none of us know who loud in the city's name is and him personally but he can definitely get himself on the right track get himself his own channel and look at a better perspective for himself because, and those of us, like I said, I'm 18 forever, but when somebody's insecure and they don't like themselves, that is so evident in their statements, their speech, their general expression. Uh, Chris Andrews says, imagine being a grown adult and believing everything in life matters other than money. Money matters, Chris. Money in a capitalist society, yes, money matters. Uh, don't think otherwise. But it, put it in the perspective, proper perspective it is. But don't ever believe that money doesn't matter, Chris. Big Daddy calls him loser in the city. <laughs> He's eating cupcakes before mommy reads him a bedtime story. <laughs> loser in the city. <laughs> well, thanks, Chris Andrews, and thanks for participating on the live. Rob D8870 says, Loudness City has been hurt by bullies. More than likely. I don't know how old are you, you are, Loudness City, but if you're at a teenage years, 
say for 14 to 16, you can start tomorrow. Ignore a bully. And if they put their hands on you or multiple people put their hands on you, you punch that single person. You don't have to fight them all. You hit one so hard in the nose, you, you break his nose and he needs surgery. And the other ones, they may jump on you and beat you up. Most likely they're going to back down. But I can guarantee you, you go after that one person, especially the one that touched you first. And even if he has three or four people with him, you break his nose. If I had to be a line coach for the NFL, which team would I pick? I would pick the Pittsburgh Steelers. Loudness City writes, keep projecting. P-R-O-J-E-T-I-N-G. Loud in the city. Uh, don't let anybody tell you you're not smart. Never let a teacher or any school system say, you are developmentally challenged or you need medication. That's not true. And I blame a lot of your upbringing, not on you, particularly the poor spelling, but the way they get into your head. So never, ever believe anybody when they tell you you're stupid. With the correct, I don't know what you're eating, your sleeping habits are, but a good start for that loud in the city is getting a good eight hours REM sleep, eating the correct nutritional things like the red meat, your eggs, some fruits, vegetables, oatmeal, rice, things like that. Milk if you can drink it, lactose-free if you can't. And not so much a high sugar diet or processed food diet. Loud in the city says you hate yourself. I hate myself. I don't even hate anybody. Why would I hate myself? I don't hate anybody. I certainly don't hate you. I love you. Loud in the city. You're a fellow human being. You're on the Big Lenny Lives. That shows good qualities about you. And deep down, I don't think you hate yourself either. OG Go says thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars are for degrees and subjects that most people forget by the time they start their career. But the value of real life knowledge is process. Nothing like learning on the job. Matter of fact, the great late Herman Cain, who was the founder of Godfather's Pizza, and he had a few other companies as well, said he couldn't stand when college graduates would apply for him and he'd have to interview them or his recruiters would interview them. First thing they said was, this is my degrees. I want these days off. I want this pay. And he'd shake his head saying, He'd rather have somebody with no degrees coming in and saying, I'll work on a probationary basis. Give me whatever you think I'm worth. And then if I can make money for your company, then I would like to be reevaluated as far as my pay raise. It was as simple as that. And that makes sense. Michael Paul says loud in the city might have been touched inappropriately. Yes, that has very damaging effects but mostly possibly a lack of love, physical, sexual abuse, mental abuse, poor nutrition. A lot of things go to that, and I'd rather get to those roots of those problems instead of the typical way the system does it, saying he's developmentally challenged or autistic or learning disabilities or needs medication. I don't believe that. I think Loud in the City needs some love. He needs some, a personal call with me anonymously and talk about what he really wants out of life. Because everybody that's living right now has the opportunity to start over. And it's all about how do you affecting your fellow man? That's the key to life. How do you affect your fellow man to leave them 
with more knowledge and an improved situation on this planet. <laughs> My name is Dr. Great, but the G is silent. Thanks me for the uh, anti aromatase advice. He dropped the aromadex and lowered the test to 400. Yes, Anadrol is great for pre contest. The good thing about it, it doesn't, it's in and out of your system quickly. Yes, dating apps are cookie cutter. OG Ghost says, yes, the symbol of the Steelers helmet is a chemical color makeup of steel, one of which is in the first place. Very interesting. I did not know that. I knew it had steel, but I didn't know it was the chemical color. James Stack asks, Lenny, what's your highest level of degree? The highest level of degree I have is a degree in which I can use common sense to sift through the BS, negative messages, and demonic temptations of life, which affects me, affects everybody to some degree, and it destroys your soul. Thank you, Sus Rando. Thank you for participating in this live. Loud in the city says you're 53 and have nothing. I'm 18 forever. And at the end of the day, we all have nothing but our soul. Not even our body. Our body will rot away. At the end of the day, we have our soul. So, loud in the city, I mean, these possessions and I don't know what else you're referring to, but that's it. Life is short. You know, people have homes and boats. They have jewelry, they have motorcycles. They have cars, and yes, yeah, some of it's very important for life, but at the end of the day, we don't even have our body. We have our soul. What have I done for anyone in my life? Well, loud in the city, I've had direct messages from many maniacs. People have said they heard something I said on a podcast or just the fact of watching an old Delray Misfits episode during a low time of their life when they had a gun to their head or a knife at their wrist. And when they heard what I said about suicide, they decided not to. And that's two or maybe three dozen. And at first I was surprised, but it doesn't surprise me much anymore. But it's not me. It's every maniac has the ability to do that too with their fellow man. And that's, that's an accomplishment. Dan St. Fernandez was why well, grow balls one day and visit Brad? Probably, more than likely. It'll be a surprise. Thank you, Ryan Bamsford, for life. And maniacs inspire other maniacs, and maniacs inspire the average person. Yes, Summer Nights, I have great love for you. Most of 
today's public school education is complete trash and it's demonic, Michael, and it's brainwashing of the worst kind. Loud in the city says, Lenny, let's be honest. If I had money, I would be out clubbing and taking Molly like you were. Yeah, probably, but very infrequent. I mean, I was once every once a month, but even that's too much. But I will work on that loudness city and thank you for bringing up that point. I mean, you're not off base on there. And I thank you for that. You know, you need other people to correct you. And Loudness City, yeah, you are right to a point. Just by you correcting me, uh, made it worthwhile for me and hopefully for yourself. So you can go to bed knowing that, hey, you pointed out a bad fault of somebody and you helped them out in your life. And I thank you, Loudness City. And I want to thank everyone for joining the Big Lenny Live. And good to hear that nobody's going out tonight. Get a good meal in. Love everybody.